This model is blowing everybody's mind. Hello my friends, how are you doing? Yesterday in my video I showed you a trick on how to get stunning, high detail, high resolution upscales that are super sharp and everybody asked what model are you using? So today we're gonna talk about Ref Animated and I will give you some extra tricks on how to get even better results. Also don't forget about my live stream tomorrow where we're going to have a ton of fun and check out different tricks and of course review your images. So Ref Animated is made for portraits and full body images. Look at these stunning results you can create with it. And I want you to pay attention to the facial features, how really well they are defined. Also to the ears because they can be complex for AI and here they work really well. Then we have the collarbones that look very expressive, but also very natural. And the hands that you can see here are not created with control net. They are just vanilla ref animated. So these results are just really stunning. So the first thing you want to do here, of course, is download the model. Choose here the safe tensor version, then download it into automatic 1111 models, stable diffusion into this folder, stable diffusion into this folder. When you start Automatic 1111 now, you will probably get desaturated results from your render. So I'm using a VAE specifically with this model. So here's a download to the original VAE from Stable Diffusion. You want to download that again inside of the Automatic 1111 folder, Models, and here into the VAE folder. After you've done this, go back to Automatic 1111, click on Settings, click here on Stable Diffusion on the left side, and you see here you can choose from a SDVAE, and you want to choose this one that you have just downloaded. If you don't see it, here on the right side you have this blue button, click on that to reload the models, and then it should be in the list. After you've selected that, click on apply settings so that this model is used from now on. This is also the VAE that is used in Invoke AI, and I find that it gives really stunning, amazing results. At this point, you might be confused, what is a VAE? Well, when an AI renders an image, this is happening in the latent space. So it's creating a latent image. This is not a visible image. It doesn't consist of pixels. It consists of information that is only usable for the AI. This has to be converted into a pixel image. And this is what the VAE is for. Let me know in the comments if you want to have a video about different VAEs, what they are for, how to use them. Next, Next, we want to look at the prompt because this is really important. And as with every model, I'm using the prompts that are found on the model page because these have already been defined and refined to give you really good results with this specific model. But then I also refine them myself on top of that. So in this case for portraits, what I found works really well in the positive prompt is that you're using in the round brackets at the start of the prompt, the words best quality, masterpiece, realistic, detailed. Then at the very start, I also write portrait and close up to define that I want to have this quality and this kind of picture as my end result. At the end of the prompt, I found that it also helps again to have in round brackets masterpiece. Then after that, absurd res, and this is not a typo, absurd res is the word for high quality, high detailed images. After that, I also added for myself HDR because I find that this gives better results where the shadows are not as dark and the contrast is a little bit softer in the image. Another thing that might help you get better results here is you want to write freckles because that will give you more detail and better skin in the face, but of course also freckles. And then to define an eye color because that can help you get better eyes and also a rounder iris. If you don't want to use freckles, what you can use instead is highly detailed skin. Now in that case, you can write it either as is or again with round brackets around it. I also want to point out in the positive prompt two more things that can be important. One is looking at the viewer so that the character is actually looking at you. 
Another thing that I find is helpful here is detailed background and also insanely detailed to get a really nice result. And interestingly enough, what I also found is that when you have a comma here, you leave an empty space, another comma, this can actually help you also get better results. Then we have a rather long negative prompt. This is again from the model page. I edit at the start wires earrings dirty face because I often found that with this model that you can get some strange wires sticking out of the ears you can get some elements that are in the face so writing this can actually help clear that up now in the next part it's getting pretty interesting in round brackets it reads bad image v2 30900 bad prompt version 2 bad hands 5 easy negative ng deep negative version 140 bad artist anime colon 0 0.7 and then we close the round brackets what is that well here comes the interesting part these are negative embeddings so they are specifically rendered to avoid bad things in the image now I think you can use this negative prompt and still get amazing results without using these negative embeddings but when you download them you can get better results. Here is a comparison. So here we have a result using my upscaling method to get these super nice details. This doesn't use the embeddings. I have not downloaded it into the folder. You see that the results look really amazing from the face. Also, when we look down at the hands, I would say that the results are pretty stunning. Now, this image here is using these embeddings as suggested in the negative prompt. And you can see that the details are even finer. The eyes look better. The pupils are smaller. The ears are a little bit more high detailed. The decoration in the hair is better. So all of that is actually improved in a slight way. Also, when we scroll down to the hands here, even though the hand position is now different, the hands and the fingers are stunning. When we look down here at the hanging hand, this is really, really great result. So you might want to use these embeddings. Then we have another round bracket here, worst quality, low quality, colon 1.5. We have another round bracket, depth of field, blurry, colon 1.2. Another round bracket, grayscale, monochrome, colon 1.1. Nose, cropped, low res, text, JPEG artifacts, signature, watermark, username, blurry, artist name, trademark, watermark, title. So a lot of that stuff, of course, removes all these kind of markings you sometimes find in the image. So you actually get a clean result without any of that, without any also text in the image. Then in the next round bracket, we have 10, muscular, lolly, petite, child, infant, toddler, Shibley, SD character, colon 1.1. So this is to avoid all of these kind of strange results that you can have from anime images and you get actually a mature looking character. After that, we have multiple view, reference sheet, long neck. So you only get one character in a really beautiful design as a portrait. Really, really good result. Now let's talk about the workflow here for a second. What I'm doing is I'm using a random seat until I find something that works well. And when I find a seat that works, I click here on the recycle button. This will load the seat from that image into that field. Now that I've locked down that seat that gives me that result, I can go up here to the prompt and tinker around with different words, play around and add some things, also delete some things. Reducing things from the prompt is an important way to get better results. You can do that, of course, in the positive, in the negative prompt. If you don't get the results you want from the positive prompt, you might have overloaded your negative prompt. So try to remove stuff from down here to see if you get the things you want in a better way. Another thing you want to try here is if the image doesn't give you the results, if it looks overcooked, if it is too saturated, if it kind of looks strange, reduce the CFG scale down here a little bit to see if this will actually give you better results that stick closer to the prompt. So in this case, you can see here I'm using a CFG scale of only six. 
Another trick you want to use here is to try out different sampling methods. Also, when you've found and locked down the seeds, still you can play around here with the methods. I would suggest you also try out down here the DPM++ 2M Keras or DPM++ SDE Keras to see if this improves your result. With Euler A that I mostly use, but it gives softer results, I mostly use a sample step of 20 because this this gives me fast results and it also gives me a good quality. Afterwards, as I showed you yesterday in my video, you want to send this to image to image and upscale it to the double size. This will give you this will give you a little bit different image depending on how high the denoising is, but lots more detail. So you want to do that step before you go to the upscaling in extras. Absolutely let me know in the comments what you think, if you have other tricks to improve these results even more. Thanks for watching, leave a like and see you tomorrow in my live stream. Bye! Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet and well, um, yeah. <laughs>